I think what we're going to do is go for this battle first. And it looks like it's another one that's completely in our favour, but we are going to quick save it and uh, fight it on the battle map nonetheless. Beyond. Let's go. So one cool thing probably to do would be get a black dragon to land in the middle and use a dark conduit on it because what the dark conduit does is it actually increases the cooldowns for abilities so Nelosi after using the dark conduit can't use any of her other spells whereas with the deck black dragon the only spell that you're using is the breath so it's much better to use it on a black dragon than on Nelosi herself I think. Where right, they have the high ground here we do have plenty of units to just charge towards them though. We'll do a similar thing. We'll have a uh, black guard on the flanks. We'll put the dark shards in the middle. I'm going to put them in like smaller formations like this. Um, with the shades on the flanks. Okay, and all of those units. Plus the hydras actually on the flanks. Can be in one group. And we'll lock it. I'm just going to swap these ones around so that doesn't confuse me. Never mind. It's not working. Um, Alright, and we'll keep the Black Dragon separate, of course. Let's start the battle. They're starting up in this these trees over here. So let's go ahead and uh, get them down or force them down maybe by getting our archers on target. We'll go kill off the L Cannon. I might even land one of my black dragons. Not sure. Maybe we can just like noxious breath all of our dragons onto the hell cannon and kill it. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe we can do that. Look at him go. Just absolutely awesome. Lucy's on this left side one. Trying to hit my black dragons. With the Hell Cannon. Time to split, boys. Kill off this Howl Cannon. Get rid of it. There we go, it's gone. We blew it up. <laughs> the flame breath just destroyed it. That's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna wait at the bottom here because we can probably entice them down. Move back a little bit. They have no reason to stay up there now. And if they do, we can probably just use our breath on them again. Hello boys, how's it doing down there? Why would you just stand there and take this? Channel my rage. <laughs> they just can't do anything about it. Dreadlord. They don't have any spells or anything to bring them down, so... We can just do what we want. They're going to have to come and charge us. Which is exactly what's happening. And then as soon as they engage my front line, I'm going to have the Hydras coming on the flanks. And uh, we will wreck them. I'm very tempted to actually have these Black Dragons engage the Chaos Knights. Um, we'll, keep, we'll keep sort of on top of the Black Knights here, or the Chaos Knights. And I'll use my breath on them again. Wherever next. I can also use the Web of Shadows. Oh yeah, the Shades do a ton of damage, yes, don't they? Lovely. Black of heart. Right, here they come. 
get the uh, war hydras into position. I <laughs> uh, probably need to turn up skirmish mode in all of these, put them on guard mode. And, well, time to throw in the fire, I think. Okay, the other thing we can do is have one of these black dragons just land in all of the middle of this infantry. And then we go, hello boys, it's a trap. Look at him, that poor black dragon. You think he's going to die, but then he's not. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Alright, let's get an OC and that come down and help out. Um, we should probably kill off this giant. So let's target that. They're not even getting to my main infantry line. They did kill some of my witch elves. That's just because they're rude. The web of shadows down. Use foe seeker deadly onslaught. Probably should have used that before she landed, but that's pretty much job done. The hydra there. Completely wrecking the Chaos Giant. Let's see if we can kill it with the flame breath. Oh, yes. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> I love this army. The Lucy has the army she always dreamed of. Absolutely spectacular. Double War Hydra, double Black Dragon with her own Black Dragon. Fantastic. Close victory. How is that a close victory? We barely lost any troops. <laughs> 68 troops. Close victory. Okay, Warhammer. <laughs> oh, man. Insane. This army is, like, almost perfect. The only thing I don't like about it is that Nalosi is reliant on Witch Elves. I kind of feel like Witch Elves aren't that good. They belong to me. We'll take the replenishment again and the slaves. And, and uh, that will help us out with some of our income. Okay. I'm probably actually going to give Lord of the Black Court. that new thing to... Moksha, the elf servant, on the st on turn start, lords in this character gain have a chance to gain one loyalty. That should definitely help them out. So let's change it for the banner of swiftness because that's not too good. That should save our loyalty there. Master of cruelty. As for Nalosi, she's used up all her moves now, what so me? we'll just level her up, and that will be that. So what were we going with? Devastating charge, wasn't it? So that, yeah, she when she charges into combat, it's absolutely savage. Okay. Koval. Can we switch you out? Not yet. We're still in the same turn. It really confuses me when we have, like, epic battles, because I come out of the battles and I'm expecting to be able to do stuff. But our technology is finished in one turn, which reduces the upkeep for Dread Spears, Dark Shards, and Bleak Swords, which is really nice. Um, the Black Arc is upgradable and we do have the cash to do it now so let's do that and is there anything else we want to build i'm not sure there is we can upgrade this to the messenger's lodge house because we did actually want to recruit into moksha's army didn't we but i didn't get around to it because i'm using him to intercept morphage here But yeah, it looks like we've dealt with Chaos, which is fantastic. We've almost de dealt with Skaven, which would leave only the High Elves to send an intervention. Nice. I send the turn. Who 
Busy Ray said, did one dragon get four levels in one fight? I'm actually not sure. Unfortunately, it does look like our Dark Elf intervention is dead. And they might be able to get back Val's Anvil before the before the ritual ends, which would kind of suck, I guess. Hexawattle is definitely bleeding out, though. They are taking a lot of punishment from the Cult of Pleasure. I'm glad the Cult of Pleasure is kind of there. I guess it, it, if we owned the Cult of Pleasure, then we would have a lot more armies. Maybe a couple more armies. But it's nice that we just have an AI to do it all for us. You can see they're just savaging the Hexawattle armies now. So that's good. I'm going to take back all that land, probably, and uh, be very strong. Now, Clan Pestilence has started their ritual. We can't necessarily stop it, because I don't want to break my friendship with them. But it's okay, because we should finish ours before then. It'll be worth looking again in the next turn if we can secure more trade agreements again and yeah, the servants to chaos are moving down to Kera We're actually marching down now and it's an ambush more Finch coming to take on Moksha winning this battle should help out with the morale so let's quick save it and fight it on the battle map. Let's go. Never auto resolve an ambush. <laughs> Even though in a one on one fight, this would probably be an absolute slaughter. But it looks like uh, they're going to make it e easy for us. They're going to attack us instead. Then, after we've uh, beaten this battle, we can go back to Nagarond and recruit ourselves some more Dark Riders, which would be fantastic. I find it really funny how he's like slow mo riding in the air. Alright, time to pause. Is there an entire army below us? I guess we're kind of on a hill, aren't we? Hmm, how do we want to do this? We don't necessarily have any like fast units, so we've got to be a little bit careful about these play claw catapults. That's kind of annoying. Uh, we could have maybe some of the dual weapon shades run around the corner and uh, take them out. I could also maybe get Moksha to fly over there and, and deal with them. Let's just spread out our army. Um, maybe withdraw a little bit back here. And we don't necessarily want to fight downhill though. If we rush to the top of this hill then we'll actually be in a pretty good position. We'll have our Black Guard of Nagaron spread out. Dark Shards with Shields can Make the second line, have the normal shades on the flanks, like so. I might have the Harganeth Executioners on the far left actually. We can have this guy, Siamak, take on their leader. And our Bolt Throwers may as well start firing at the Hellbit Abomination because that's going to be a pain in the ass to take down. Dreadlord. Well let's have Moksha sort of just fly over the top. Maybe we can get him to take out the plague or catapults. If they're charging towards me like this, we should be okay. A plague or catapult though is gonna do a lot of damage to the black guard. Oh not good. Oh god. Took a lot of damage. That is not good. It's taking a ton of damage. Oh my god. Oh, their range force is absolutely annihilating Moksha. Get out of there. God. 
Dodge him, Hoxha. Get away. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, <clears throat> time to engage. We have Blackguard taking on the Hellpit Abomination. Let's have all of these guys turn off skirmish mode and just start firing. Um, these two need to stop and start firing as well. Harganeth Executioners can get over here. This Blackguard and Agron are blooming quick on their feet, I'll tell you that much. Didn't expect them to get that far that quick. Unfortunately, Moksha's kind of getting wrecked. Maybe try and kill these night runners. I might have Moksha just come in there and take him out. We are ready. No mercy. Let's kill this help here, abomination. Get rid of that, and we should be okay. For the executioners to just run into that engagement. Right, where is Moksha? What's he doing? He needs to get out of there. Um, as for Siamak, Siamak can get into this engagement. Maybe we use a Dark Conduit and uh, sort of carry on. Glorious carnage! The other thing we can do is the Lamentation of Despair. Come on, let's use it. Never mind. Okay, so yeah, we'll have Moksha come back. He's fine now, which is good. Um, the Skaven Slaves of Spears are going to be dead soon. They came out of the Hellpit Abomination. Uh, now we just need to clear up their ranged forces. So let's do that with the Dark Shards, actually. And we will hit these Plague Monks. Let's maybe just do a Dark Conduit in the center here. That will destroy those two units. And then we can sort of charge them down. Okay, cool. We've got the egg we can use. Let's just use that there. Now, with most of these gutter runners dealt with, we can probably have Moksha and Siamak take on their general, but just a little bit worried about getting hit by more ranged forces. Maybe if we focus the warp th fire um, throwers with the Shades of Jewel weapons, that will get the job done. Then we can have Moksha just go straight into Morphage. We can have Siamak do the same. Um, this left flank, those plague monks have done a lot of damage. Hopefully, the shades will start taking them out. I might even get these shades to get involved. They do have great um, dual weapons and they have 61 melee attacks. So they're pretty damn good. Taking out the Night Runners and the Warp Fire Throwers should leave us to take out their leader quite easily, and that is victory. Now, that was actually a little bit harder than I thought it would be. Moksha getting absolutely wrecked by those ranged forces, but with that battle won, that's a decisive victory. We can go back and destroy them in the next turn which is really good for me because it allows me to secure more loyalty for Moksha okay So sorry there if the uh, the stream went down for a little bit. Um, no idea why, 
<laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. Maybe the uh, my internet may, might have gone down for a second or something, and I didn't notice. Um, fortunately, it doesn't affect my recording. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, but we basically just won the the battle against uh, Morphidge, and yeah. Moksha took a hell of a lot of damage to the face from the uh, gutter runners with poison. That was pretty funny. Acknowledged at last. So yeah, next turn what we'll do is we'll have the low sea crush the other Skaven army. Um, we'll finish off that one with Moksha. And then that will be pretty much everything done. And then we're pretty much safe for the rest of the uh, the turns of the ritual. Anyway, posing ritual started, defensive blade gained, confident defender for Moksha, and Malekith is ready for duty. We also completed recruit convicts, which gives us a minus upkeep for dread spears, dark shards, and fleek swords. And now we have negative growth in spite reach, which isn't too bad. Okay. So Moksha's now on 4 loyalty, which is really good, and uh, we're going to have him go finish off that army. Should probably level him up first, but we're just going to auto-resolve that to so get rid of them. And we'll take that replenishment, and we will march back in the opposite direction. We've just got two points to spend now, which is fantastic. He's actually only one rank from getting himself a black dragon, which is nice. So we'll give him wound maker, and we may as well increase his weapon damage on his missile as well, because he was doing a lot of damage with that. Uh, Siamak leveled up, so we're going to continue with Counter Strike, and Nunlosi is in range to attack with his Skaven army. So for those of you on the stream that missed out on the last Skaven Slaughter, enjoy this one as we are going to fight it on the battle map. Cozy says, in the auto resolve bar, what does the stripes mean? I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's sort of the chance of it going either way. So when it's in the middle, it, it actually matters quite a lot, but when it's on the far side, it doesn't so much. It just means, I think, that there's quite a large chance of uh, it going a little bit wrong, I guess. And um, yeah, the bar there kind of represents it. It might also be the relative strength in a open field battle like this as opposed to the auto resolve. I'm not entirely sure. Hello to you, Yadatha in the stream. Let's see. I'm going to go with our normal formation with Nalosi. Black guard flanks, witch elves in the center. Witch elves don't hold the center very well, but we're just going with that. Dark shards can hold the line behind anyway with the uh, dual weapon shades on the flanks. We'll have the hydras on the flanks as well. And that's pretty much our army. Cool. Start the battle. Start moving towards them. Time to get the black dragons to go attack the plague claw catapults. Right, they have two Hellbit Abominations. Those Hellbit Abominations are disgusting. And when you kill them, a bunch of Skaven Slave appear. Um, or something else, I'm not entirely sure what it was. But not <laughs> Blackguard and Nagram there tanking some shots to the face. But we're not going to have that for long. I'm a little bit worried about their range forces attacking my dragons. But we'll have Nalosi move in there anyway with the other black dragons and uh, kill them. Wow, those were the most disappointing 
strikes I have ever seen. We did destroy two of the two of the catapults there. That was actually quite good. We do have the Shadows of Anluck to use, which is quite cool. Make sure all of these guys are on guard mode. And uh, this should end pretty damn quick. I'm pretty sure that Hellpit Abomination is dead before it even hits us. Maybe not. Yep, maybe it is. Okay, so that's fine. We've got warp fire throwers there. We can probably get into those with one of the dragons. We don't want the low seed to take too much damage. Oh, we got rid of the units over there anyway. Um, should probably have these war hydras coming in from the flanks. Can use the shadows of Anlek here, which is cool. Let's target their night runners. Kill those off. The other thing we can do here is if we go deadly onslaught foe seeker, we can get right into the middle of all of these units. And when she is, we can go for the dark conduit. We'll just do it now. Fantastic. Okay, so that's worked. Uh, let's get this black dragon over here to come back and maybe we can hit them with some fire. I'll put Abomination in the middle is doing quite a lot of damage to our lines, so we will take care of that. Get all the dark shards on target there. Okay. Uh, then what we're going to do is probably use this War Hydra to just go charge at some of these gutter runners. Maybe we do that with the dragon here. The Losi's going to deal with this Warlord quite easily. <laughs> this poor Warlord. Picked up a fight with the Losi. <laughs> the weapon damage is just nuts. He's so dead. <laughs> He's just gone. He's just gone. Oh, it's crazy. They're gone. <laughs> we'll end the battle there for a decisive victory. Fantastic. So, 141 losses isn't too bad. Untouchable, undefeatable. That catapult just does so much work. Loads of lovely loot gain, which is nice. And we are going to take the slaves. Power, dark and that puts us, I think, over 10,000 slaves now. And the unknown Skaven clan is destroyed. We have the armor of eternal servitude, which has the passive ability of regeneration. Wow. Let's go to our followers and see if we can add that to somebody's army because that armor is pretty damn decent. We have the Helm of Discord on Nelosi. Getting her the regeneration would be pretty damn cool. I feel like her ability is already pretty good though. We could give it to Siamak. What about Malekith? If we get Malekith into Koval's army, I'm not sure if we can do this in a battle, but we can replace him with Malekith. Can we do it? We can! Oh, that's awesome! So it's going to be the fight between Malekith and Valen once again. And Malekith has a trickster's helm. So we may as well give him the armor of eternal servitude, actually. Because... We actually get more armor, less melee defense, but we get the same ward save and we get the regeneration, which is nice. It's constant on self. 
We can upgrade his weapon as well. He currently has a sort of strife. I think getting the chill blade was is pretty nice idea. Has the crown of command, which isn't the best. Let's go for the potion of healing. I'm not sure I'm gonna ever let him get low again. <laughs> and the forbidden rod. Great increase to power reserves, but we now have the ability to get the back book of Asher and the scroll of leeching. And this Book of Asher, I think, is pretty damn good for the extra winds of magic power reserve like that. The Malekiths are uh, all set up. Um, Siamak here. He can get the Trickster's Helm. He's got the Tormentor Sword currently, which is pretty good. He's got the Luck Stone as well, which is fine. And he's got the Rod for Briars, which is nice as well. He doesn't need any more followers. Uh, Rubiness doesn't need anything. Uh, Web of Shadows is fine on the low C, and the Hell of Discord is the best she's going to get now. Okay, so that's fine. We've done all of our armor and I our followers. We just need to catch up now to the army here, the Chaos Army, and we're good.